How's it going guys and welcome back to Dip Discovery. Now today we're looking at the ND filters you can get for the new Insta360 ONE RS with the 4K boost lens. Okay, now these I actually got from Insta360's website direct. They've been on coming soon for quite a while, but now they've finally been released. So I'll put a link in the description, which will take you straight through to the site where you can get them from. Now they are actually quite expensive as well. They're actually $79.99 plus uh, shipping. So, uh, you know, depending on where you are, where it's coming from and how, what your shipping cost is, it's actually quite expensive, but you do get all four ND filters with this. So these have been long awaited. They've already had them out for the One R, but this is the One RS boost lens version, not the one inch sensor, and that's what they fit for. Um, so let's have a quick look at it here. Now, if you actually see here, it actually is made by Freewell. So when you actually go on the Insta360's website, they don't actually say that they're actually a Freewell. It kind of looks like you're buying a genuine Insta360 thing, but it's just resold Freewell ND filters, but they do the job. So let's have open up the box and see what we get inside. So you get the ND filters themselves in a nice plastic case with a little window on it. So we'll have a look at that in a second. And you also get this little envelope here. So if you open up this envelope, you can see what you get inside is a basics on how to use the ND filters and your ISO settings, all that kind of stuff. Also has a QR code on there, which takes you through to some uh, tutorials that Freewell have set up for the NC361 RS. Um, you also get a nice little... Uh, uh, fiber cloth there which you can use to clean the uh, lenses and you also get a filter guide here which tells you what the best uh, like filters to use for whatever shooting scenario that you get there. So that's nice to see. Um, let's have a look at the actual ND filters themselves. So here's the ND filters, they come in this plastic box so let's peel off the uh, little uh, sleeve there and you can see it's a free well branded Brock, there's nothing to do with Insta360's brand, it's just a resold free well product. Now, the main reason why this is different than the uh, already out where ND filters you can get for the in 361 one R is because the shape of the lens is slightly different. So if you have a look at the lens here on the One RS, it's got this little chamfer on the edge which slopes down and that means the shape of the actual lens is more different than the One R which is actually straight and that's why the One R ones don't fit. So the new ones here, if you, uh, I'll open up the box and you can see um, they come with a nice foam padding to keep them protected um, while you're kind of in transit or anything like that and you get the four ND filters, but you can see uh, when I, if I take a lens out here, it's got that chamfered edge um, there on the side, which will allow it to go over that chamfer on the um, uh, One RS lens. So uh, let's have a closer look here at the box. You can see it's got a nice soft kind of uh, pushing uh, foam kind of insert just, you know, so the lenses don't get damaged in there as well and you get the nd4 nd8 nd32 and nd16 filters depending on your shooting scenarios you got four choices there on which ones you want to use so typically you'd use like the nd4 um that's your lightest one um so that's what you'd use if it's like say a tiny you know bit sunny but probably look mainly really really cloudy you know uh, you get away with the nd4 uh, ND8 again, a bit more brighter uh, weather. ND16 is when it is kind of super bright weather, um, you know, maybe the odd cloud here or there. And then ND32, where it's absolutely beaming by bright peak summertime, you know, uh, sunshine, the high absolutely clears. That's when you want to use the ND32. So obviously, that's all they are. So uh, what's the point in them? Well, the point in them is so it will allow you to set your shutter speed on the uh, Insta 361 RS camera, that's the whole point of having an ND filter because if you put your shutter speed up, um, it means there's more light coming into the camera, um, so the image is overexposed, so you need to put an ND filter on, which is basically like sunglasses to kind of take away some of that exposure and, um, you know, make the scene uh, look correct. Uh, ex exposure wise so that's why I use the ND filters by putting the shutter speed up it also gives you motion blur as well which is quite important if you're filming uh, on the uh, on the ghost stuff and you want a bit more realistic kind of footage a bit more cinematic footage 
that's the whole point of the motion blur. So it looks like you're moving not too still and you get a real sense of the speed of what you're moving at with the ND filters. And um, that's what it's for there. Um, so uh, I'm gonna do some footage of me uh, uh, riding the bike before and after so you get an idea of what it looks like. So let's cut to that. All right guys, so I'm out on the road now with the Insta 361 RS. Um, now this is what the footage looks like um, at 4K 30 FPS, uh, but everything set to auto. So as you can see, there's not really any uh, much motion blur in the footage as I kind of drive past. I mean, I'm only doing like 30 miles an hour here. Um, so you're not going to see much, any, that much, you know, uh, speed, sense of speed anyway. Um, but it all looks quite still. So if I just pause the footage here and take a clip, you can see how um, everything kind of looks uh, like a bit um, still, like it doesn't look like I'm moving. Um, everything's kind of uh, in focus, not blurry. Um, and uh, you know, that's what you kind of get if you're using the auto settings because you know, the uh, shutter speed is being done automatically to try and let in um, as much uh, light into the sensor whilst also keeping a good uh, exposure. So I'm just going to pull over now and then I'm going to change the settings to my manual settings um, and you'll see what that looks like without an ND filter which will kind of explain to you why you kind of need one. Alright guys now this is what the footage looks like if you're not using an ND filter and using manual settings. As you can see everything's super overexposed because it's letting way too much light into the sensor and it can't block it out which is what the whole point of the ND filter is and it's a super bright day today. So uh, the settings I've got right now, I'll put it up on the screen, but yeah, you're looking at 30 FPS um, so you want double the shutter speed to get that motion blur so that's 1 over 60 on your shutter speed and I'm using the ISO settings as 1600 max but probably won't even need any of that today because obviously it's so bright so if I put on the ND filter now I'm using the ND32 because it's such a bright day and I'll show you how much of a difference it makes okay guys so I've got the ND32 filter on right now the settings are exactly the same as what I had before when it was overexposed but obviously now because I've got the ND32 filter on it's cutting out uh, all that overexposure that it was getting from the uh, increased shutter speed and it's dimmed it down to obviously what looks like a correct uh, exposure and that's the whole point of it but by doing that now I've got the uh, the motion blur in the footage as well so um, let me just get up to speed somewhere and I can show you uh, a pause of the clip um, which will kind of show you what it looks like um, and you'll see the difference between the previous version okay so here I've got a bit of speed here and I'm just going to take a screen clipping now and as you can see here from that clip um, you can see in the tarmac that it's a bit blurred out the trees that look like they're going past and it looks like uh, I'm actually in motion now if you compare that to the previous version where I didn't have the ND filter and I'm using the auto settings you can see the difference there so you get a more cinematic footage if you're using the ND filter now obviously if you're a bit confused about which ND filter number you should be going for that kind of depends on um, how bright it is basically in your current uh, shooting environment so say if you uh, I mean today is an absolutely mega bright day uh, in the northwest of England very very rare <laughs> but there's not a cloud in the sky and his sun's beaming down at 31 degrees and it's absolutely really really bright um, so I'm using the ND32 um, obviously if it was uh, similar kind of conditions but a bit cloudy a bit overcast then you'd probably want to use the ND16 uh, and so on you know depending on how dark it is if you shoot filming at night then you probably want to use uh, no ND at all um, and you'll still retain that kind of motion blur but night is a whole other kind of bag of worms okay guys now there's one thing I need to mention is the Insta360 flow state stabilization when you're using Insta360 flow state stabilization with an ND filter because you put the shutter speed up the flow state stabilization doesn't work very well you'll find that the footage is all like all over the place all jittery like uh, wobbly like jello and it doesn't quite look very good um, and that's because uh, of the motion blur that's in the footage you see the flow state stabilization works best when there's no blur um, around the edges of the frame and that's how it figures out how to um, uh, 
you know uh, stabilize the image but because you're running uh, at higher shutter speed and there's more motion blur in the scene it can't figure out what's going on um, so you're gonna have to uh, take full state stabilization off uh, your camera if you're finding that you do get that and the quality will be better if you don't use it um, now you can go back into the instant 360 software and add full state stabilization into post um, but again it will kind of give you mixed results you might find better results in post than you do if it's baked into the camera um, I'm not using it at all in this footage um, so this will give you an idea of what the footage will look like if you don't have it at all and I think it actually makes the, the quality of the image uh, better um, but uh, you know I have an experiment with that so anyway I hope this video yeah, you found it useful and I hope you like the footage um, and let me know if you've got any questions about these ND filters I'll be happy to try to answer them and catch you on the next one